You guys ever had a game that has just been so hacksy, you've had it reach beyond the tipping point where you've been upset and you're just like, I just kind of want to finish this out and see how much worse this could possibly get. And let me tell you, I've had a couple of games like that, but I can't really say I've ever had one where I'm facing my opponent face to face against a friend of mine in real life by the name of Darius. Um, holy shit. So we have a different game that I'm probably going to upload later on in the week. Uh, but this is the, I think this was the second game of two that we had. And this was ridiculous because we were like, you know what? I, I have some UUE things. I'm just going to bring those. And he was like, I'm just going to bring some things and i was like okay so you know he's got a mega amphros he's got a i learned he's got an assault vest drapey on that thing takes hits deceptively well uh as you'll see in a little bit and he's got some other stuff you know uh, it wasn't really so much tears it was just like it was like a stuff kind of thing uh i usually when i play stuff tier against somebody i get a different vibe for what they have and i just try to go with it more importantly it's just about having fun except for wow like this these just wow so I'm going to go for a Seed Flare, I do knock him down to a Sash, but immediately, immediately on turn one, we get some hacks, he misses his Icicle Crash. Um, I'm jumping a little bit ahead of myself, but this Shaman should have been dead, should have been dead, so he just misses it, gets to get off some damage with the Ice Shed there, I definitely would have felt a little bit better about myself, he did get a crit on it, but it does run half, and I don't want to miss my Seed Flare, so I just go for an Earth Power, totally acceptable thing to do, um, he didn't even get rocks up with this thing, which is usually what Sash Mammo is there to do. Uh, he just basically kind of lost it, so uh, he's gonna go out and do his Drapion now I do want to hang on to my Shaman because it does it is life orb rest So if I can find an opportunity to rest later, uh, I'll take it. It's also a good status absorber uh, Might as well hang on to it So I'm looking for something to take a knockoff and I figure you know what Crocodile actually doesn't really mind it that bad It is choice banded so I lose a little bit of stopping power But I would like to switch up moves every now and then so it's not bad that way I don't get locked into one move that doesn't benefit moxie and then right here I I can actually switch up to Stone Edge if I do so choose, but I decide to not choose that option. Uh, my Stone Edges really aren't going to be doing that much, and I figure the best thing I can do here is Death Fodder Shaman to a Brave Bird or a Knockoff or a Foul Play, whatever he wants to do, but it turns out he just whirlwinds me right back out into it. He's pretty set on staying in uh, and just doing whatever he wants to. I don't want my Crocodile in there anymore. I said I was pretty set on my Shaman being in here and just being ready to die, so he's just going to go ahead and Foul Play. Uh, he gets a crit here. I don't really care whether or not it mattered. I really don't know if it did or whether or not that's even dependent on my 31 ID I might have on it just because it is a gent imported one. Um, and I usually get lazy about that kind of stuff, so that could have mattered there. I'm not 100%. It is a timid one. Um, I'm not going to go run the calcs. It's, it's just more about the fact that he got a crit uh versus anything else so um he's gonna go for a foul play right here it really does nothing from mega agron which is actually or two mega agron which is fantastic uh ice punch does around 25 percent i wanted to see how much that was going to do as opposed to heavy slam so i don't know how big of a bird mandibuzz is um i also just kind of revealed that prematurely heavy slam definitely does uh a pretty comparable amount um you miss out on a little bit of damage there but you actually do have the odds to get the freeze and i was like you know what we'll, we'll try it well i'm feeling a little frisky might as well go for it so he whirlwinds me back out into this now that's not so much hacks as it is really unusual luck that this thing keeps coming in on every single whirlwind and it misses stone edge as he roosts so um stone edge is probably the new high jump kick for me if you guys have been around my channel long enough you know that i love missing high jump kick i love it like i love wiping my butt with sandpaper let me tell you it is the best thing since sliced bread it's it's freaking terrible and now i'm hitting my high jump kicks all the time i'm not even afraid of them he gets a crit right here and i missed a stone injury i was like wow 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 that is no, that's not okay. If you got another crit there, there definitely would have been some major salt there. And wow, I actually land this stone edge, and what do you know it? It really doesn't do that much damage. But I'm at the point where I'm just like, you know, I'm done with this. I, I will just let this thing die and um, I'll switch in something else. Stone edges in general have just been missing so much for me, and it's really, really really shitty now if you guys are familiar with my old kingdra um it did not make it don't not make it up with the name just because it did have a little crosshair thing in it i wasn't really sure how that was going to work out so i just decided to name him ahab but he was the crit fishing kingdra that i had in gen 5 and he didn't really so much fish for it as he did anything else uh, he just got really lucky with the string of crits. Now, I miss out on my Draco right there. I figured I would try to go for it because 
I did have the scope lens. I don't remember if I went for the... I think I went for the focus energy on the Switch. I really don't remember. But he is not only an Assault Vest Drapion, he's an Assault Vest Battle Armor Drapion. So this answers the age-old question of what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object. You miss a Draco and you get poisoned and you don't get any crits on him until he tells you after the fact that you did not have a single chance to get a crit in the first place. So I'm just going to ice beam. I'm like, you know what? Fuck you, I'm done, um, and I get a freeze. So, there's a little bit of luck going in my direction. With the way this game was going, I wasn't surprised. I, I thought it was absolutely hilarious, because I'm probably going to die to poison and everything, too. Uh, but I'm going to take advantage. You know, there's a frozen drapey on the field that really doesn't have that high of a damage output in the first place. I'm going for it. So, I go into my Zygarde, and this is my DD Zygarde, so I'm just going to set up with it right away. Uh, this is my... I've got three Zygardes, and they're all pretty damn good. Um, this one is my, I believe my Adamant DD one. I do like Adamant DD better than Jolly DD, um, just because you get more stopping power with the E speed after plus one. Um, and it's not that awkward of a speed tier. You know what you do at speed and you know what you don't at speed. It's got a good amount of natural bulk. Um, it's essentially like Garchomp, but without fire coverage and you just DD instead. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, he switches in, takes, I think he took some rocks damage there, I forgot when I set up rocks, did I set up rocks? I don't know, I don't know where that damage came from, um, but he just, he, yeah, he protects here, uh, in order to get his flame orb going, I think that is going to, oh, it stops my outrage, or, yeah, I'm pretty sure that just straight up stopped my outrage, uh, but he's gonna go for an earthquake here. A, the reason he went for an earthquake is because he hasn't had the opportunity to import one with Ice Punch, and that's cool and all, you know, Mach Punch, Knock Off, uh, Ice Punch, that kind of thing, whatever standard dot Con Kelder happens to be right now. And he got a crit on the Earthquake. So, uh, while it wasn't really, I'm not sure between, you know, just a regular Flame Orb boosted Earthquake and a Mach Punch from Breloom, whether or not that was actually going to matter. Um, he's just gonna go for a mock punch right now. I think he was life orb. Just Zygarde's got a really good amount of natural defense, so I kind of want to say that the crit did matter. And we also learned right there that he is—he's uh, not life orb because he would have gotten life orb recoil right there. Um, and he also just doesn't want to stay in for this, so he's gonna go ahead and go back out into Drapion. I guess he thought I was gonna go for a Psy Shock. I'm at or a Psychic. I'm just gonna go for a Dazzling Gleam because I know he still has this thing. It's not gonna do a lot of damage, but damage is damage on the Switch, and that's that's what's important here, folks. So I'm gonna go back out into Mega Agron. I've been using Mega Agron a lot lately, and while I can't say it's the best thing in the world, it's pretty it's pretty fun. I've been using a Rest Talk set with Heavy Slam and Ice Punch. And I've just been getting really good rolls on it. It is one of the more dependable sleep talkers I have run into in a little while. Because I've been trying rest talkers in general. And you gotta get Heavy Slam or Ice Punch. Now right here, holy shit. I don't think he was expecting that I was gonna do this. But I knew he was faster. I knew he wasn't gonna start dance. I knew he was gonna want to put me to sleep. And immediately start setting up. Which is why I clicked Sleep Talk. Uh, I know for those of you that have been playing this game for a little while, it's kind of an obvious play. I guess it just kind of blew his mind that uh, though I was asleep, I was still able to talk in my sleep and park my fat ass right on his stupid shiny head. So, um, I don't really even mind at this point the Sleep Talk thing, but Agron does let me down on this turn because he, uh, he does turn out to be Mega Ampharos and he does turn out to Agility up on this turn. Now, the thing about Mold Breaker is it also gets through Filter. So, if he has Focus Blast, he just really doesn't give a shit about Filter at all. It's just going to do uh, all of the original damage, and it's scary. So, I, in order to get anywhere here, I do have to Sleep Talk and Ice Punch, and then that will get me the damage I need in order to be able to take it on uh, with Alakazam, but I unfortunately get a rest, and he's just going to Focus so I'm surprised he didn't miss another Focus Blast here. Um, yeah. Oh, we got a crit on that one. I was like, okay. I don't... Does that matter? Why does that matter? I really don't think that mattered. Um, just because of Mold Breaker. But, I don't know. We'll see. So, uh, as if there wasn't enough salt in the wound. Uh, I don't think he gets a crit on this one. I'm just playing. <laughs> it could not... Well, it could get way more haxy than this. I would just not be comfortable with it. So, Psychic does X amount. I get the feeling Dazzling Gleam would have done a little bit more. But at that point, I kind of gave up. Because all I really have is this and Kingdra anyways. And if I had just rolled some kind of attacking move with... Um, 
with Agron, I feel like I could have done enough with Dazzling Gleam to take this thing out, and this is all I have left. So I think I ended up losing that either 2-0 or 1-0, but goddamn, there was... If you go back and rewatch that, you're going to notice that there was a lot of hacks lining that game, uh, but it still made it oddly even for some strange reason. I really don't understand how the universe works sometimes. But that was, in fact, a game that I had. Uh, if you guys did enjoy it, you're definitely welcome to leave a like rating, comment, and subscribe, and do your thing. And that should do that of me. I will see you guys on the next one. Goodbye.